everyone and welcome to advanced class. I'm so happy to have you here. I'm teacher Lydia. If you know me, welcome back. If you're here for the first time, welcome and we're so happy to have you here with us at Santa College Online Live. These live classes are really great because we get to connect with so many students around the world. The last count I heard was over 11,000 students all around the world. So guys, thank you so much for being here. We're so excited to help you learn and live your dream. So at Santa College Online, we have all kinds of cool different options for you guys to check out. If you subscribe, you can see all kinds of different courses in different languages, in different situations where you use English, and it's just a great resource for you all around. We have games. We also have our free podcast on Spotify called Seda Talk. That would be really awesome for you to practice your listening. So if you haven't checked it out, please check it out. We would love to have you as guests listening to us. So I just want to give a couple more minutes for, you know, our classmates to arrive so you guys can have a great class experience. Make sure you're commenting with each other and comment to me. You know, tell me where you're from. Tell me how you, how you found out about SEDA. We're so excited to have you here, um, and we love the interaction. And it's great for your learning, too. Just remember, one of my most important phrases is use it or lose it. So if you don't use your English and practice your English, you could lose your English. It's possible, okay, because it's not your mother tongue, probably, so it's easy to forget. I also want to remind everybody to make sure you have a notebook. You can take notes during class. It's a really good idea to put the date on the notebook, too. And make sure that you're checking your notebook and checking your progress and really building confidence in yourself as a learner. Because especially with something as personal as language, we can feel really embarrassed sometimes if we feel like we're not as good as somebody else or as good as a native speaker. Don't compare yourself to anybody but you. Make sure you track your project progress and you say, hey, look at me. I know more than I did last week, than the week before, than a year ago, than two years ago. You really need to celebrate your little successes and make sure you are being proud of yourself every day. You come here and you learn with us in a live class, you do any form of studying with your English, you are doing an amazing service for yourself. So you should feel super, super proud, okay? So like I said, this is our advanced class in SETA College Online Live and I am teacher Lydia. Today we're gonna to be talking about the parts of a sentence and we're going to talk about when to use infinitives with to okay because sometimes we don't know when to use infinitives and when to use gerunds um so the next class will be about when to use gerunds but today i really wanted to break down like the parts of a sentence which takes a little bit of time and i wanted to tell you when to use infinitives with to so this is just some great um kind of grammar focus for you. We're going to get geeky with grammar, okay? So remember, it's cool to be a geek, it's cool to be a nerd and study and learn stuff, so that's what we're going to do today. Let's get started. Open up that notebook, take out your pen, and pay attention, because we're going now. All right, so grammar. We're going to review the parts of a sentence, as you can see here, parts of a sentence, okay? So there's three parts we're talking about in particular because hopefully everybody knows uh, the parts of speech, a noun, a verb, an adjective, adverb. Remember, noun is a person, a place, thing, or idea. A verb is an action word. An adjective describes a noun. So the blue house, blue is the adjective, house is the noun. And an adverb modifies a verb. So it says how the verb or the action is done. So he walks slowly. Slowly is the adverb. Walks is the verb. Okay, so those are the simple basics. But let's go a little deeper. A lot of times nobody ever talks about a clause or a predicate. A subject, hopefully everybody knows too. That's the main um, character of the sentence, the person or thing that's doing the action. Um, so a clause, a subject, and predicate are very important. Sometimes it's easy to get like a clause and a sentence mixed up, but a clause is a smaller part. So let's go deeper into that, okay? And it's not like Santa Claus at Christmas. Sorry, guys. Okay, parts of a sentence. 
claws. Claws. And we're making a z sound at the end here. It's aw for the vowel claws. It's a unit of grammatical organization next below the sentence. So it's smaller than a sentence in rank. And rank also means importance. And in traditional grammar, is said to be is said to consist of a subject and a predicate. So a clause consists of a subject and a predicate. Well, in this sentence, when summer comes, we go swimming in the sea. Where's the subject? Who is the subject? Who's doing the action? Guys, tell me, because I don't know. We've got a pink part of the sentence and a blue part of the sentence. One of them is the clause with the subject who's doing the action. Okay, so we is the subject, right? Because we go swimming in the sea. We go swimming. We is the subject, but here summer can also be the subject of this part of the sentence. So actually the blue part and the pink part are both clauses, okay? We're going to explore a little bit further. If you got confused, that's okay. Summer, okay? And then we over here. So it says a unit of grammatical organization next below the sentence in rank and in traditional grammar said to consist of a subject and predicate. So here, summer comes. That's a subject and predicate here in this clause and we go swimming in the sea, that's the next clause, okay? There's two clauses there separated by punctuation, the comma. All right, parts of a sentence. Again, subject. A part of the sentence or clause that indicates A, what it is about, or B, who or what performs the action. Okay, so when summer comes, we go swimming in the sea. We is clearly the main subject of this sentence. Very, very good if you got we. Um, take a moment, write another sentence, okay? I'm going to give you one minute to write another sentence that clearly has a subject that you can point out. I know this is simple stuff, guys, but it's really important to review. So take a minute to write another sentence. So, subject is a part of a sentence or clause that indicates A, what is it about, what it is about, or B, who or what performs the action. Okay, so we're gonna take some time, we're taking a minute to do that. While we do that, I'll give you some music as usual, some nice classical music to chill out to. Hmm, what classical is on my tip? Let's see. Classical. Chopin. So if I say the sentence, I really enjoy the music of the composer Chopin. Who's the subject of the sentence? I really enjoy the music of the composer Chopin. Am I the subject? Or is Chopin the subject? Tell me guys, tell me in the comments. I'm looking for your comments. And if you have a sentence ready, a brand new sentence, and you can tell me the subject, awesome. Good job. Time to turn off the music. All right. So let me check your sentences. It looks like everybody is doing very, very well. So awesome. Good job keeping up, guys. Let's move on. Okay. Parts of a sentence, predicate. And so with this one, we're not saying pre here, we're saying pre, di, and then we're saying kit, almost like it's K-I-T, kit, predicate. 
The part of a sentence or clause containing a verb and stating something about the subject. Something about the subject, okay? When summer comes, we go swimming in the sea. We go swimming in the sea. When summer comes. When summer comes is a predicate because comes is a verb. But also we go swimming in the sea. Go swimming is a verb as well, right? And it states something about the subject as well. So both parts of those sentence have predicates because they're both two separate clauses, right? And a clause has to have a predicate. There it is. There we have it. Okay, so now let's get on to when we use infinitives. And this is really important. I cannot tell you the number of times I have had students come to me and say, okay, when do I use infinitive plus two or two plus infinitive? When do I use the gerund? It can be super, super confusing. And it seems like for a native speaker, we just know, like we just know when to say what and when it sounds weird or it sounds correct. As a teacher, it took me time to figure out the grammar and learn, okay, when is it appropriate to have two plus infinitive? When is it appropriate to have gerund? When can you have both? And is there a difference in meaning? So today we're beginning to explore this process. And the reason for that is I want you guys to know when you read a de definition or something, what those parts are, the clause, the predicate, the subject. So if you're asking questions later about anything for grammar, you'll understand. So if you looked up in Google, when do I use an infinitive? When do I use the gerund in English? They would give you an answer with clause, predicate, subject, etc. So it's really important for you to know how to understand those things before we go any further. I'm going to explain it in my own terms, but I want you to get it in the academic terms too. That's why we did a little bit of a pre-lesson with some of those terms, okay? Those three terms there. All right. When to use infinitives? After an adjective with to is okay. So an adjective describes a noun, right? The first sentence, number one here. What is the subject of this sentence? What's the subject? What is the verb? What is the adjective? Okay, so again, I'm going to give you guys one minute, actually one minute and 30 seconds to tell me three pieces of information. What is the subject of sentence number one? What is, excuse me, the verb? And what is the adjective? Sentence number one. Okay, one minute, 30 seconds, start. Music again. I really think it's important for you guys to try and guess and try to make an educated guess on these answers first before I tell you. Because sometimes you know all this stuff, you just need to review. All right, what is the subject of sentence number one? What is the verb and what is the adjective? Subject, verb, adjective. The new software is really easy to use. You guys can do this. I'm going to check the comments in a second. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And we're done. Okay, so what is the subject of the new sentence? People who said the new software are absolutely correct. Well done. Very well done. 
And there's two verbs here, right? Is is a verb and use is a verb. Easy is the adjective. So easy was the adjective and when we had to put use after it, depending on, yeah, this one, use after it, that means we have to put two to separate easy use. You can't say easy use. We need a preposition there. So it's two plus infinitive, easy to use. The new software is really easy to use, okay? So if you are writing a sentence and you're putting an adjective and then you wanna put a verb, then you gotta put two, okay? You can say difficult to use. You could say difficult to understand or easy to understand. Same thing, same principle. Okay guys, so well done if you got that. If you didn't get it, it's okay, don't worry about it. We're doing this together. All right, example number two. We use infinitives after some specific verbs with two, okay? Now we're talking about verbs, some specific verbs with two. Number two, sentence. They arranged to have a car pick them up from the airport. They arranged to have a car pick them up from the airport. Same question as number one, who's the subject? What's the verb? And what's the verb? <laughs> I guess here, because we don't have an adjective, I'm going to ask just two questions. Who's the subject? What's the verb? Okay, or verbs. So I'm going to give you 30 seconds for this one this time, because I think you can do it more quickly. Because I think you're getting better, better and better every time you study with me. Okay, let's go. 30 seconds. What's the subject? What are the verbs? You got this. You don't even need me. You can do this. You got it. Woo woo. What's the subject? What's the verb? There it is. We finished very quickly there. Okay. So they is the subject. So if you said they, awesome. I'm going to check the comments, give you guys feedback and any questions. Arranged is a verb to arrange. And here we had to put two to separate it from the next verb. So two verbs here. So far, arranged, have, and pick up. That's a phrasal verb, pick up. So they arranged to have a car pick them up from the airport. So we're putting another version of the subject here between pick and up, because it's a phrasal verb. They arranged to have a car pick them up from the airport. Awesome, guys. If this is a review, then great, because what's wrong with reviewing? If you're seeing this for the first or second time and finally getting it, awesome. If you're seeing it for the first time completely, great. Because we're all doing something positive here. I'm so glad to have you with me. So it says in number two, after some specific verbs with two. So I'm going to give you a list of some of those specific verbs. Is this all of them? Probably not. Because English is always unpredictable, but this is as many as I could come up with. Okay? When to use infinitives continued after some specific verbs with two. Here's a list of specific verbs here. We have afford. So we could say, we can't afford to go to the cinema. So after afford, to plus go. We can't afford to go to the cinema. Agree. He agreed to come to the party. He agreed to come to the party after agreed to and then the next verb. Okay. She appeared to enjoy the dinner. Appeared to enjoy. So I'm just going through one by one for you, for you guys. Okay. He arranged to meet them tomorrow. 
be arranged to meet them tomorrow. Here are some more examples here. We don't expect to see them again. Expect to, after expect, and then see, another verb. So you can think about like the two verbs, like two pieces of bread in the sandwich, and then the word to in the middle, like the meat and cheese. So verb to verb, bread, meat and cheese in the middle. So the two is, we can use sandwich like a verb, sandwiched in between the two verbs. B, he would prefer to have pizza for dinner. Prefer to have. He would prefer to have pizza for dinner. So I'm going to go through and pronounce all these verbs for you. And I'm going to ask you to come up with two sentences, original sentences on your own, using these with two plus infinitive, okay? All right. So afford. Afford. Repeat after me. Afford. Very good. Agree. You can see that a uh, is stressed. The first syllable is stressed. Appear. Appear. Arrange. Arrange. Great, guys. Choose. Choose. Decide. Decide. Expect. Expect. Fail, fail, hesitate, hesitate. So there's three syllables in that one. Hesitate, hope, hope, learn, learn. Manage, manage, mean, mean, plan, plan, prepare, prepare, pretend, pretend. And again, I'm not saying pre, I'm saying pr, pretend, craw, this is an awesome, promise, promise, refuse, refuse, want, want, would like, would like. Would love, would love, would prefer, would prefer, help, help, wish, wish. So again, the examples, let's say them together, okay, you can repeat after me. We don't expect to see them again. We don't expect to see them again. Great. Guys, you're doing awesome. If you're repeating with me, you're doing great. Got to get speaking practice. He would prefer to have pizza for dinner. Awesome. And again, here, remember, the twos, sometimes we're not saying to, we're saying here, like I said, ta, prefer to have. That's a very native speaker thing to say. He would prefer to have pizza for dinner. Can you say that? Awesome. Great job. Very, very good. Okay. So I'm going to give you a gap fill exercise here and then we're going to go back and do those original sentences I was talking about. I'd love to see you create some original sentences and put them in the comments so I can correct them for you, okay? 
So when to use infinitive as practice, here's fill the missing verbs plus two, okay? Number one, should say the company, sorry, the the got deleted. The company offer you a bonus at Christmas time. So the company offer you a bonus at Christmas time. Figure out the three missing parts there. Number two, chi the children do not to be awake enough for the movie because they are falling asleep and it's only been playing for five minutes. So number two, I gave you the two, but I'm trying to get you to figure out which verb comes before the two. I'll read it again. The children do not to be awake enough for the movie because they're falling asleep and it's only been playing for five minutes. Number three, it was his fault, but he apologized for the mistake. So two missing parts there. It was his fault, but he apologized for the mistake. <coughs> so let's do two and a half minutes for this one. Um, now nah, three minutes. Yeah, give you some time. One minute for each sentence, okay? Don't want to give you too little time. And we will. Now, two minutes, 30 seconds. We will then go over the answers together, okay? Take some time to work on this, guys. Okay, I'm gonna have some water in my bowl. We're good to stay hydrated. I love this kind of fizzy water. As they say in Europe, water with gas. It's really nice. I never used to like it when I was a kid, but I like it now. I like it better in a glass bottle. company offer you a bonus at Christmas time. Number two, the children do not to be awake enough for the movie because they're falling asleep and it's only been playing for five minutes. Number three, it was his fault but he apologized for the mistake. Take a look back See which verbs here you think would work for that. Afford, plan, prepare, hope, learn, would love, would like, refuse, manage, pretend, beg, decide, choose, appear, agree, arrange, fail, expect, hope, mean, plan, promise, want, help, wish, would prefer. I think I said all of them. Think about which ones would work here. Write them in the comments for me. Four, three, two, one. Okay. So let me see what you guys have done. What do you have for number one? Number two? Number three. Okay, it looks like a lot of people probably got it really well. So number one should be the, the company 
would like to offer you a bonus at Christmas time. Sounds good to me. Number two, the children do not appear. You could say seem as well there as well. But um, the children do not appear to be awake enough for the movie because they're falling asleep and it's only been playing for five minutes. Number three, it was his fault, but he, that's right, refused to apologize for the mistake. Alrighty then. So let's go back here and I'm going to give you guys some time to come up with one of your own sentence, one original sentence using any of these words here and the two plus infinitive correctly, okay? Because I think you need more practice. And make this sentence about whatever you want, okay? Whatever you want. Let's take a minute for that. Read my examples again for you. We don't expect to see them again. We would prefer to have pizza for dinner. You can choose to go to the cinema or go shopping. We are prepared to handle the crisis. I want to go to Italy next year. He wishes to get a dog. She hesitated to help him when she saw the damage. She called the police <laughs> for help because she didn't know what to do. Yeah, sometimes it's hard to think of an original interesting sentence, but whatever you guys come up with, I am here to help you correct it and make it right or to tell you, good job, it's awesome. Either way, you are awesome, you are doing great, and I believe in you. Okay? Great. So I'm going to check some of these sentences now. And thank you so much for your time. Leave your sentence here for me. I want to check it for you, and I want to be here with you. Next time we're talking about when to use the gerund. Okay? When to use the gerund. Super important. We're going to have a lot of practice with that. And I'm going to have some extra sentences and gap fills where you could use a gerund or infinitive plus two and get you to identify what's right with that, okay? Thank you guys so much for your time. <laughs> this music is really not appropriate. Um, I really, really appreciate you coming here to join me for the live class. You're doing amazing. You're doing something good for yourself, mind, um, mind and soul. So thank you for spending this time with me. I really appreciate it. We here at Seda College Online really appreciate your time. Check out the other stuff we have to offer. And thanks again. Hope we've helped you live a little bit of your dream of speaking English better. And I'm Teacher Lydia. Thank you. Have a great day.